In Doom, some models were created from clay, and with the help of a special stand with a camera, they were digitized from eight angles. Clay models were sculpted by Adrian Carmack, although some of the sprites were hand-drawn by Kevin Cloud. Various children's toys and even a chainsaw toy were taken as the basis for many weapon models, and the model of such a famous BFG-9000 weapon was created by mirroring the side of one of these toys. The Doom WAD file uses a one-byte number to store the colors of these assets, which indicates the index of the color in the corresponding palette of 256 colors. And for assets, several types of textures are used, firstly, these are the so-called patches, these can be small parts of textures or the textures themselves, and some of them can be attributed to a separate group for game sprites. At the same time, with the help of patches and their combinations, more complex textures for walls are formed. And flat textures are a separate type, which are used for floors and ceilings and have a fixed size. And thus, we need to figure out how to get patches, form textures from them, and also how to load flat textures. So, first of all, we need to load the color palette, for this we will use the method in which we read 3 bytes at the specified offset, this is the color in RGB format. Further, all assets will be located in a separate asset data class, an instance of which will be accessed through the WAD data class. To read the palettes, we need to use the lump name playpal, and in this way we will read all 14 palettes from the WAD file, this number of palettes is used to create different effects, but we will work with the main one. And at the moment we can display this palette, as well as change the function for obtaining color using this palette, and by the way, we can pre-normalize the value of the light level when reading it. And in this way we display the current color palette, and also all the colors have become corresponding to this palette, so that we can now enjoy the retro style in our renderer. And since we have access to the palette, let's figure out how we can now get patches and sprites from the WAD file. So, according to DoomWiki, we need two structures, for the patch header and what data is contained in each of its columns. Then for the patch, we will have an appropriate class that has a method for loading column data. In this method, by the name of the patch, we get its offset in the WAD file, and then we read the patch header using the method defined in the WAD reader. And let's look at the example of one of the pictures this method of reading header. After we read the patch size and position data, we read the offset values for each of the columns, these offsets determine the places in the WAD file from where we can read the patch column data, and apparently this method was chosen to achieve some data compression. And now, iterating over the width of the patch, we get these offsets, and for them we call the method for reading data for the current column. So, starting to read the first column, we determine the top offset value from the beginning of the column, for the image these are transparent pixels, then we get the length value for reading the data, and we read information about the pixel indices for the current palette. Reading data continues until we encounter a value equal to 256, which means all data for the current column has been read. And having received all the column data in the form of a list, we can form the finished image, first we form the surface according to the size obtained from the header, to ensure transparency, fill it with a color that is not in the palette and apply the set color key function. And then iterating over the columns, we set the colors of this surface according to the received data. And since we're scaling from the original Doom resolution, unlike textures, we need to scale the sprites as well. So, in order to load the sprites of items, weapons and enemies, then in the directory for this there are markers for the start and end of these sprites. And then in the asset data class, we can use the method to load them, and store them in the form of a dictionary, the keys of which will be the names of the sprites, and the values will be their images. And I propose to see what sprites are contained in these lumps, since I use the shareware version of the WAD file, some of the weapons and monsters are missing here. But I would like to note that the sprites used for the head-up display, images of the initial screen and others are loaded directly by the name of the lump. And for a change, you can use the method for drawing a sprite, for example, I chose a shotgun sprite. So now it will be more fun to explore the level, although this is just used as a decoration. And now we can move on to considering the features of reading textures from a WAD file. In Doom, many textures are built like a constructor by combining different patches, and the names of these patches are contained in a lump called pnames. By loading the names of these patches, and using the patch class, their images can be loaded and placed in the appropriate list. And then we need three structures, this is for reading the texture header, and structures for patch maps and texture maps, and let's figure out what they are for.
So, the texture header contains the offsets of all textures for reading them from the WAD file. A texture map is a blueprint of how to assemble this texture, that is, its name, what size it is and what patches are used for this. And accordingly, in the patch map, we have information about its position on the texture, as well as the corresponding patch index from the pnames list. And according to these structures, in the WAD reader class we define methods for reading the texture header, patch map and texture map. And we will load data about texture maps into a separate list using the appropriate method. But here it should be taken into account that the name of the texture lump for the shareware version is texture 1, and for the paid version there is an additional lump, texture 2. And having loaded the texture maps, we can now form their image using the texture class. In this class, based on the texture map data, we form a surface of a given size, and then apply patches from the pnames list to it at the position specified for them. And in this way we can see the textures formed from the patches. And such an unusual approach to the formation of different textures ensured that Doom quickly spread among people, since it took only a few megabytes of free space, which was quite a weighty argument in those days. And now it remains for us to load the textures used for texturing the floor and ceiling. So, flat textures are a simple 64 by 64 pixel image, and the beginning and end of such lumps in the WAD file directory are determined by F markers. Loading such textures is quite simple, we just read the color indices in the palette in an amount equal to the size of the texture, and using the flat class create an appropriate surface where the color of each pixel is set according to the read palette indexes. And we will store them in the same texture dictionary along with wall textures. And finally, we got the ability to load and display all the assets used in Doom. And now I would like to move on to how to do the texturing of walls and ceilings, but for this, first of all, we will change the concept of the current image rendering. So, at this stage, we will create a frame buffer object, it's just a 3D array corresponding to our screen resolution and storing a color value for each pixel in RGB format. And on each frame, we will blit this array onto the rendering surface. And now the drawing methods themselves will be implemented as static methods, where we iterate along the line coordinates and assign the appropriate color in the frame buffer, but as you can see, the ng decorator from the Numba module is additionally used here. Numba is a just-in-time compiler developed with the support of large companies, and using this decorator allows this method to be compiled, and thus avoid performance drops when using pure Python. And using this approach, we can work with each pixel in the frame buffer, and this is what we need to implement texturing. And I'd like to start by texturing the walls, and let's look at that with an example of the solid wall rendering method. Aligning wall textures is actually quite a complex topic. The way textures are aligned depends on the wall type, the line def flags controlling pegging, and the side def offset. For example, for a solid wall, if the lower unpegged flag is set on the line def, the texture is pegged to the bottom of the wall, that is, the bottom of the texture is located at the floor. Otherwise the texture is pegged to the top of the wall, the top of the texture is on the ceiling and the texture continues down to the floor. In the last video, we figured out how to find the shortest distance to a segment and calculate the scaling factors for its projection. But now we need to find the appropriate column texture for each projected wall line. And to do this, we need to find the offset value to the first vertex of the segment, and then using the tangent function we can find the value for the desired texture column. So, we find the offset value to the first vertex using the sine function, while we additionally need to take into account the offset value of the segment relative to line def, and the default offset value for the texture itself. Next, we find the required texture column from the tangent formula above, but to calculate the y texture coordinate, we use the reciprocal of the scaling factor, and with all this data we call the draw function. And in this function, we iterate over the line coordinates, take the appropriate pixel color from the texture, taking into account the light level, and in this case, the step for the y-coordinate of the texture is the inverted value of the scaling factor. And if we run the program, we will see that the solid walls have become textured, well it's quite interesting to see how our walls get the original textures. And for portal wall texturing, the same approach is applied, given that the portal wall acts as a bridge between two sectors, such as a window or a step, the upper texture is pegged to the lowest ceiling, and the lower texture is pegged to the highest floor. And obviously, we have to figure out how to apply textures to the floor and ceiling, as well as rendering the sky texture. 
As for the sky, we need to define an ID and texture name for it. The shareware version has only one sky texture, and by the way, in Doom, almost all sky textures were made based on real photos. So, to draw the ceiling and floor, we now use the draw flat method, and if the texture ID refers to the sky, then we draw the sky as a wall, where the column number is calculated based on the direction of the player and the X coordinate of the line being drawn. And in such a simple way we get the rendering of the sky. But as you can see there are some weird walls with a transparent ceiling, they shouldn't actually be rendered, and for this one trick is used that allows you to change the height of the ceiling between the front and back sectors without rendering the upper wall. And now it remains to do the texturing of the floor and ceilings, and let's see what the main idea is behind this. And this texturing will be done when the texture ID is different from the sky. And below you can see this method. The main idea of texture mapping is that we need to project a trapezoidal region on the screen on the texture, the formation of which corresponds to Y coordinates from the edge of the screen to its middle. Everything here is based on the fact that the field of view is 90 degrees, and our task is to first calculate the left and right coordinates of the segment that corresponds to the current Y on the screen. Now we get the values of the increment DX and DY, which correspond to one pixel of the screen width. And then we can compute the texture coordinates on that segment, and we do this for all the segments in that area. And so we finally got the Doom level viewer, and although it still lacks the implementation of rendering transparent textures, items and enemies, they use a different approach for rendering from far to near. But despite this, this series of episodes was made because of the huge interest in what path the guys from id Software had to go through in an era when there were no game dev books and tutorials, and there was no GPU in the usual sense. And as for this Doom level viewer, the code is available at the link in the description, and it can also be used for WAD files of the second part of Doom.